Hello and welcome to Unit 6. In Unit 6 we're covering circular motion and universal gravitation. In Part 1 of, of Unit 6 we are going to cover uniform circular motion. To begin with, we're going to remember what we've learned in previous units. What happens when velocity and force, net force, are arranged in different ways? If we look at the first combination, we have net force and velocity um, pointing opposite each other. In this case, the velocity, as we've learned in the past, will decrease in magnitude. The next set of two has the net force and the velocity pointing in the same direction. So in this case, the velocity will increase in magnitude. If we consider the last four, the net force and velocity are perpendicular in all cases. And as we've learned in the past, this is going to cause the velocity to change directions. It will turn. Not only will it turn, but it will turn in the direction of the net force. So if I consider this one, it is going to turn so that a while later the velocity will have a downward component. Or if I consider this one, it will turn such the velocity will have a upward component. Now what happens when the net force is always directed perpendicular to the velocity? If net force and velocity are always perpendicular, then all it's going to do is turn. Or in other words, it will move in a circle at constant speed. An object moving in a circle at constant speed is said to be undergoing uniform circular motion. In this case, you get the centripetal acceleration and the centripetal force. The centripetal force is a special name for the net force acting on the object. So when an object is undergoing uniform circular motion, the net force becomes the centripetal force. And the acceleration takes on the centripetal form. The centripetal form for the acceleration is the velocity squared divided by the radius. What are the directions for the acceleration and the velocity when something is undergoing uniform circular motion? To answer that question, we're going to look at this simulation. In this simulation, I have a ladybug and a green beetle sitting on a turntable. And if I cause the turntable to turn, here we can see the turntable is going counterclockwise. And the velocity points perpendicular to the radius or tangent to the circle in the direction of the rotation. So since the uh, turntable is rotating counterclockwise, the ladybug's velocity points this way and the green beetle's points that way. For both ladybug and green beetle, the acceleration points inward toward the center of the circle. If I reverse the direction of rotation, we see that the velocity now points the other direction, but the acceleration still points inward. So summarizing, if I have objects moving in a circle at constant speed, then the velocity will point tangent to the circle in the direction of the rotation. So as I'm drawing my arrows, these objects are moving in a counterclockwise circle. The acceleration for all of them will point towards the center of the circle. To within my ability to draw this. If we focus on the blue object, we can define the angle that it's rotated through. Here I've defined it relative to the positive y-axis. I can then drop a coordinate system over at the blue object 
And I see that the acceleration makes the angle theta with respect to the negative y-axis. This would allow me to write my acceleration at any point in terms of x and y components. But as we've seen in the past, that's not necessarily the most convenient way to work a problem. So instead, we're going to find two new directions. And we can find these directions through the angle theta. And forgive, on the next slide, I have theta in the wrong spot, so I'm going to move it. So there's my angle theta. I'm going to define a coordinate system where one axis points towards the center of the circle. That will be the radial direction. And the second axis points perpendicular to the circle. That is tangential axis. This will come in useful in a future unit where we consider motion that is circular but not uniform.